how you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, August 25th, and here we are with Isaac uh, getting right into it here. He's moving up now in towards the eastern tip of Cuba, which is north-northwest of where he was last night. His track originally, coming from south of Haiti, was coming towards the northwest over uh, most of the eastern half of Cuba. And notice what has happened now, how the tightly clustered short-range models are now way off because of these mountains in here, which again I mentioned would be the wild card and could um, trick out the track at any time. And that is exactly what has happened overnight. The mountains of Haiti drew Isaac's circulation northward and now it's much farther northeast than it was supposed to be and now it's going to be moving along the coast of Cuba moving over the very eastern tip right now and then it's still going to be a game to see how much these mountains of eastern Cuba pull it either this way or how far offshore they let it come. The farther offshore it gets, the stronger it's going to be able to become. The fact that now it is going to avoid moving over the landmass of Cuba means that this is likely going to be able to strengthen into a hurricane as it approaches south Florida over the next few days. Here's the GFS, and uh, regarding the track of this, here it is at 36 hours showing this near south Florida and uh, you can see the ridge off to the east here and the weakness directly north. I'm still having a hard time believing this doesn't just come up parallel to the Florida Peninsula, but the models are very tightly clustered now and despite shifting east yesterday are still showing this bending towards the northwest and not curving north until it reaches the Florida Panhandle. At least they've dropped the nonsense, at least most of them have, of this coming northwest into the central eastern Gulf Coast. That track pretty much impossible, but at least they're now showing this recurving in a northward direction as it comes into the panhandle and uh, not showing it over the peninsula today based on the models being this tightly clustered it I have to shift west a little bit with them here and you'll see that with the track at the end of the video and this is going to be coming over a little bit more water now and the fact again that it's north of Cuba now remember that these track models can still be wrong short range. They were here at the 24 hour mark across central Cuba yesterday morning. Look at how far northeast they have shifted because of these Caribbean islands being the wild card player here. And now this is coming into the Florida Keys as likely a hurricane. You can see on the water vapor imagery here, here's the storm. Rather ragged, not a lot of convection with it. Obviously it's being torn up a bit by Haiti right now, but the tearing up is minimal compared to what most storms have to deal with as this is coming through the Windward Passage and uh, having the least interaction with mountains it can really get. And uh, you can see there's still some dry air trying to wrap in from the Western Caribbean here, but notice what we have. We have a sharp trough over the southeast United States and there's a piece in here that's starting to split away and this is going to be moving west southwestward with time. As this trough lifts out, we're going to have a favorable pattern for ventilation and upper ridging developing. You can see by 36 hours on the GFS, the storm is going to be here near South Florida. You see the piece splitting away to the west southwest and the trough is now leaving. And as these two features separate, this one northeast and this one southwest, this ridge is going to expand and balloon over the eastern Gulf of Mexico and allow a very favorable pattern for strengthening. By 60 hours, you can see the ridge expanding over here and the storm is likely somewhere west of Tampa by this time with this feature continually backing southwest. Again, upper level lows backing southwest away from tropical systems usually means that they are going to strengthen and sometimes explosively. The problem for Isaac is going to be the fact that if it does curve up here, and you can see my track has shifted west now because if the models are going to be this clustered, this close in, it's probably going to take their track. They have come east, um, but I'm going to have to come west, making a correction towards them, and we're meeting kind of in the middle here, but this is farther west. No longer overland, but west of Florida, and this will probably strengthen through its first landfall in the Keys or southern Florida, and then the second landfall farther north. Now, the NHC intensity is pretty close to this, in fact, I think they have it at exactly 100 miles per hour now at landfall in the Panhandle as of the 11 a.m. advisory. Um, but the 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 key for this is going to be separation from Florida. As it comes through the Keys, I think it's only going to be able to make it to a, a lower half Cat 1. But as it comes around Florida, storms that curve northward off the Florida west coast tend to struggle, and very few of them actually strengthen through the second landfall. I have it strengthening 
through the panhandle landfall because of the pattern I just showed you in the upper levels, which would seem to offset any kind of dry air that it has wrapping in. Storms coming up the west coast of Florida get inflow coming directly off the peninsula, and the main inflow of storms coming to the Gulf is from the east, so it's mostly dry air coming into the circulation. Then you start getting it from the north as well, and if they come up towards this area in the bite of Florida, it really becomes difficult because they have inflow from all sorts of directions here coming off of the land instead of the ocean. Um, but if this gets separation farther west, for example, a track uh, west of Apalachicola would probably result in this being an upper end category too, whereas a track that I have here near or east of Apalachicola, more likely a lower end category too, not really strengthening as rapidly as it could be as it's coming through the Florida Straits here. However, this is obviously a dangerous situation. This is likely a double hurricane hit coming for Florida and folks in here should definitely be prepared. Remember this is a very large storm. The easterly fetch here is very strong which means tropical storm conditions are going to be felt along southeastern Florida even if the track is well west of you. So this is going to be a large storm. You can see rain coming out ahead of it so rains are going to be very heavy by the time the totals are racked up after the center finally gets through here. All these bands in front and all the bands behind are going to be bringing rain and I know some of the areas in northern Florida are still really soaked from Debbie so this may not be a very fun situation in terms of the rainfall and of course with a category one or two hurricane uh, making landfalls it's going to be a tough wind situation as well and of course more rain will come for Georgia and the Carolinas as this will be slowing down trying to recurve around this ridge as it goes up and leaves so we will keep a very close eye on Isaac and we shall see what happens. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.